Hello, my name is Nicholas Santillo. I lead online learning at Logical Outcomes, a Canadian nonprofit, and I'm here to lead you through Unit 1 of our curriculum that we've developed for DHIS2 Learning, which is the DHIS2 Features and Data Dimensions. This is an overview of the DHIS2 curriculum that we've been developing at Logical Outcomes, and it's based on the materials that have been available to us from DHIS2 Academy workshops that you can see listed on the side of this slide. Now in this video we're going to be going over just a brief overview of DHIS2, and in future videos we'll be covering uh, each of the following units. The required readings for Unit 1 are Chapter 1 and Chapter 3 of the DHIS2 User Manual, as well as Chapter 1 of the DHIS2 Implementation Guide. This is a list of the key features and the purpose of DHIS2 from the DHIS2 User Manual. Now, I've just highlighted a few of the key phrases, and we're going to be going through a lot of these in depth later on in different units, but it's a great uh, way to just see the specific things that DHIS2 does uh, in detail. You can pause this if you'd like to spend more time reading this, or you can go directly to the DHIS2 user manual. But I'm going to move forward and uh, look at some more key things at the moment. So the DHIS2 components that are the most important uh, when looking at DHIS2 and, and considering implementation or when just beginning implementation are, of course, the metadata configuration, which uh, is the data elements, the data sets, and the organization units within DHIS2. The data elements being the what, uh, the data sets being the um, data entry screens that contain data elements, and the organization units being the hierarchy of different organizations uh, from districts and facilities all the way up to um, a national level. This is uh, when using uh, within the healthcare system. Data capture, uh, validation, and approval, of course, has to do with uh, setting data validation and approval, uh, which allows for minimum and maximum and, and many other things. And we'll cover more of that in the data validation video. Visualization and sharing, such as pivot tables, charts, the geographic information, um, system or GIS and dashboards which contain all of these different parts of visualization will be showed in multiple uh, data output videos. And communication, of course, messages within DHIS2 to other users and the capacity for DHIS2 to message users externally through email or through SMS. Of course, this information can be taken outside of DHIS2 through web API and web portals, or uh, information from Excel spreadsheets can be imported directly to the system, or uh, information from the system can be exported into Excel spreadsheets or uh, PDFs if they're uh, data visualized, uh, if they're pivot tables, to be able to allow for uh, further analysis or to have handouts for clients or other users. And of course, finally, the security and access levels allow that different users to have different uh, roles and different privileges, which means that there's a higher capacity for uh, information to remain secure and uh, confidential when required. The three core dimensions when describing information in DHIS2, in this case, public health information, are the what, the when, and the where. So the where, we have to talk about the organization units, which I mentioned briefly earlier, and there will be another video describing them more in depth, but organization units are the hierarchical level of uh, facilities, and then facilities within districts and districts within provinces, provinces within a nation. Uh, this is using the healthcare model um, uh, that, that kind of collect information and then send it up to higher levels. Uh, so organization units are very flexible. Uh, you can create them however you want to DHIS2 and, and uh, group them in, in many different ways. But that relates to where the information is being gathered. Because multiple organization units can enter the same data elements, which is our what. Uh, the data elements would answer something like the number of something. Uh, in this case, infants born to HIV positive mothers registered in uh, the ICAJA PHC. Now that PHC would be the where. Um, the number of infants born would be the what, and that would be a data element that uh, would allow someone to enter a number uh, uh, from one to how many. Of course, the when answers uh, over what time period are we talking? Are we saying every day? Are we entering this data weekly or monthly? And this is decided 
when we create the data element. Now it's good to make sure that the data elements can have similar periods so that uh, data can be entered in a group, uh, especially when it's aggregate like this. But uh, we'll talk about best practices as well when we're talking about data entry specifically and data input, which is in a later unit. The most important thing to know is that these three things, the what, the when, and the where, all together help to triangulate and create useful information that can then be made into a report. So finally, I'm going to leave you with a little graph or a visual that shows you kind of the outline of how DHIS2 works. Uh, on the left side, we see getting data in, the data warehousing, and on the right side, we see getting data out, the decision support systems. So the getting data in is where we would enter data into DHIS2, and that can be from paper forms where we enter it directly into the system online, or we enter it into a spreadsheet that's then uploaded uh, or imported. Uh, we can enter data directly from our mobile devices. Uh, often this is done for individually tracked entities, although it can also be done with smartphones uh, and it can be done for aggregate data. As well, you can uh, even use um, emulators that will actually allow you to use the um, mobile device app on your computer because the mobile device app has a lot more frequent updates than the uh, the desktop version or the uh, web version of DHIS2. So we'll talk about that a little bit later in uh, the web and apps um, units. But finally, one of the ways you can import data to DHIS2 is through API. If you have a survey tool that you're already using or another system that's uh, actively containing or, or inputting data, or taking in data, that can be uh, customized to then just put that data directly into DHIS2 so that DHIS2 can still work on the data and you don't have to change uh, your user end system. Once the data is in DHIS2, it'll act as a data warehouse, of course, and it'll also be able to uh, add metadata to what you're working with. And of course, it has all the visualization tools built in. And what are those? Those are the dashboard, the graphs, the maps, um, and these are the things that we'll be looking at in the data output unit. Of course, we can also create a web portal that contains specific graphs that we want to maybe share with clients or share publicly. And if we want to get very complex, we can send out mobile um, SMS messages or emails directly to specific users, uh, either internally or externally. Um, that will give them notifications if there is uh, a, if a trigger has been met, if data has gone over or under uh, an ideal thing, uh, the system can be can flag uh, that and send it out as an SMS or an email. So this is just a simple overview of of kind of how to conceptualize how DHIS2 works. And in the next few units, we'll be looking at all, all these things that I've kind of mentioned over the last few slides, but in more detail. Uh, once again, it's really uh, we really recommend that you do the readings uh, along with us the from the user manual and the the uh, implementation guide. And if you look at the the intro to DHIS2 tab, if you're using our OneNote uh, notebook, that will contain a lot of supplementary videos. If you're not part of the uh, Logical Outcomes uh, notebook then you can look on Logical Outcomes YouTube channel and we have a lot of uh, playlists that we're sharing and we're collecting videos that are great overviews of DHIS2 not only created by us but also created by other um, major players in the sector. So the last two slides I'm going to leave you with are a little interactive survey to see if you've uh, caught on and, and can remember all the details. Uh, it's not a big deal, it's a small little quiz but uh, just to make sure that uh, you know to do them, I'm not gonna be able to uh, talk, so I'm gonna leave you here, uh, but uh, I hope to see you at our next unit, and thanks so much. So that's it for now, thanks so much for watching, and uh, until next time, I'm Nicholas Santillo from Logical Outcomes.